Let's practice right now. You take an IP address, you figure out the class, you figure out the network, the network broadcast address, and the range of addresses. That still matters sometimes today, and you can learn how with some practice. Let's do it. So this practice has to do with Volume 1, Part 4, Chapter 12, the first section in there, and I have a matching video here in the YouTube channel. And here is the problem. I want you to figure out the class, A, B, C, D, or E. And if it's A, B, or C, then based on that address, you can figure out the network ID, the network broadcast address, the range of usable addresses, and the default mask. So that's the ask, and I want you to do that for these five problems on the right. You can hit pause now and go do it. But I'm going to show you an example just to remind you. For instance, with the address 8.4.1.1, I would look at the first octet, think about that range of first octet values that tells me the class, realize that 8 is in the range of 1 to 126, which tells me class A. Knowing I can figure out those four facts, I figure out that the network ID for class A addresses has the same first octet only with three zeros. The network broadcast address has the same first octet only with three 255s. And then based on the 8000 and 8255, 255, 255 network ID and network broadcast address, you can derive the first usable address and last usable by adding one here to get the first or lowest usable number and subtracting one here to get the numerically highest or last usable address. That's the drill. Here's a repeat of the problems. Now's the time for sure. Hit pause, find those facts about these five problems. In a few seconds, I'll keep going and give you the answers to each one right after the other. So here's problem one. The title shows a repeat of the IP address from that list of five problems. So we key on the first octet value of 128. It's in this second range telling us it's a class B address. So what do we do with that? Well, we know we can calculate those numbers. So if it's a class B address, we know two octets of network and two octets of host part. To derive the network ID then, we keep the IP address's first two octets, 128.10. Then we fill in zeros for the host parts over here. And then similarly for the network broadcast address, we keep the address's first two octets here and fill in 255s for the two host octets. As simple as that. Network ID and network broadcast address. Then it's, you know, second grade math to figure out the first and last usable addresses. You just have to know the process, which might be beyond a second grader, but the process would be take that network ID and add one to the fourth octet, and reverse of that, take the broadcast address and subtract one from the fourth octet to get the last usable address. So those are your main four key facts. And then by the way, this whole idea of division of two network octets and two host octets is implied by that default mask value of two 255s. On the left, the part in common for all addresses in the network and zero, 00 on the right, the part that varies from address to address to address, which is the whole purpose of the mask in the first place. Next up, again, looking at the title, the address begins with 191. It's right within the edge. These ranges are inclusive, so this is a class B address beginning with 191. That's the real tricky part here. So we treat it like a class B address, which means two network octets and two host octets. So then the network ID, we copy the address's value for two octets, zero is for the rest. Network broadcast address, copy the first two octets because it's class B, write down 255s. There's your network ID and network broadcast address. Then as always, once you've got the network ID to find the first usable, you add one to the fourth octet, last usable, subtract one from the fourth octet of the network broadcast address. That gives us this range of usable addresses here in the middle of the diagram, and it's the same old default mask we saw in the previous example of two 255s and two zeros. 
With problem three, the first octet is 126, which gets us to a different range. It gets us to the class A range. It's right on the edge of that range, as you see here. So what do we got there? Because it's in the class A range, we know that we've got one network octet and three host octets. And to form the network ID, we write down the network octet copy it from the address and write down zeros in the three host octets and there's your network ID. Similarly for the network broadcast address same process but we write 255s out there in the host octets. So now we got the low and high number if you will within the network. They're reserved you can't assign them to host to use as addresses. Once we know those it's a simple matter of adding one to the fourth octet to get the first or lowest usable address in the network, and subtracting one from the fourth octet of the broadcast address to find the numerically highest or last usable address. Then different default mask for class A, it's 255.000, again, telling us what we just saw, that the part that's the same in all addresses is just one octet wide, the leftmost octet, and the part that differs from address to address to address the host part are those last three octets on the right. With problem four, we finally get an example in the class C range. Notice the address in the title begins with 192. That puts us in the class C range, which means we've got three network octets. So because we've got a class C address, the network ID is the same as the address in the first three octets, but with a zero in the host octet. And then the network broadcast address, similarly, same in the first three network octets, and then a 255 in that host octet on the far right. Based on those numbers then, I'm sure you're getting the drill by now. First usable address is the same number, but plus one versus the network ID in the fourth octet. And last usable is minus one from the fourth octet out here on the far right of the network broadcast address. Then finally, the default mask for class C is three 255s and a zero. Problem five is an oddball on purpose. Notice the address begins with 127 and it's not in any of these ranges in my table. So it's in a reserved number range. All addresses begin with 127 are reserved, all that begin with zero are reserved. So not class A, there's no network ID, nothing to calculate. Now, you might read some things in different places that say all the addresses that begin with zero and those that begin with 127 are class A networks that are then never used and never act like a class A network. I don't care what you call it. It's just not used like a class A network or any other class of network. So it's reserved, no calculations required, and you can move on. Hope you enjoyed doing those. I've got another video with five more similar ones, and there's tons of other practice available as well. So you know the drill. Subscribe, bell, comment, like, share. Yeah, you know what to do. Thanks, y'all. Talk to you soon.